Hi, everyone. Um, good to uh, see everyone today. Uh, we um, already did adequate notice in the in our uh, executive session, so we're going to go right to the um, president's report. Uh, I think the only thing I have on uh, my agenda to, to talk to is uh, uh, on Monday, the 11th, we have our second strategic um, planning session at the high school cafeteria, and it starts at seven o'clock. So everyone feel free to, to, to come. I guess for the, on the board side, uh, is there a show of hands of who's going to who's going to be there that that day? Seven o'clock. Monday. Monday, right? Right. Can I get a show of hands who's going to be there? One, two, three. I don't Eight, think I'm going to be there. Four. I'm sure Denise will be there. Okay, so that means so that means it's a we have to have it run as a meeting. Right? John, John, probably will come too. I would think. Okay. So I'm not, I'll bring okay. the gavel. Um, we'll I don't know if I'm going to be okay. there. Okay, so we're going to hold as a meeting. Oh wait, okay. Monday the eleventh. Um, no. Oh, that's why he had a gavel the last time. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's why we had it. Well, oh, that's why we started yeah, the meeting. Right. I know you started, quorum. but I don't. We had the quorum, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Same place, right? Yep. yep. Okay, so uh, Dr. Svenkris, would you like to do the superintendent's report? Sure. So the first item on my list was that the strategic planning session is, that <laughs> is Monday. So thanks, Jeff, for that. And we're no going to have a new. Um, New Jersey School Board. Well, I think you all uh, saw, I think she emailed everybody, that uh, Kathy Weinkoff is uh, moving on from New Jersey School Board. She's no oh, longer going to be. I didn't get it. Oh, I thought it was too. It might have just been to, uh, <laughs> I was like, it might have been to, oh, She sent it to right, me. So Kat, like Kathy, Kathy, Kathy's moving on to another position. Oh. She hasn't. Oh, I'm talking about Jeff. <laughs> Jeez, he's just taking everything right. from I thought, her, I thought I didn't know she sent those. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, so so my my, my apologies. She, she sent it. I, I thought she sent it to all the, all the boards. But anyway, so she, she informed us that she's uh, moving off from school boards, uh, but she will be here on Monday uh, with the person who is taking over for her. So they will be there together. And then that person will do the, the, the May one and then finish out the process with us. So we wish Kathy well. She's been a very good uh, representative, I think, for, for all of, uh, for Monmouth County and for this district over the years. So we don't know. know who it is. Who's gonna replace uh, her? I have the name. Yeah, we have, we have, have name. Her. We have name on the email. Freeman, Freeman. I get, I, I can forward the email. I, I'll, I'll forward the email to everybody on the board. But she will be so you can see that. Day. Okay. Uh, and then I wanted to mention that um, along those lines, we the the climate surveys that we're doing in conjunction with the Rutgers School of Transform uh, School Climate Transformation Project uh, that will 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 be sending home information on that right after spring break, uh, and. Um, we anticipate that those surveys will be available to parents, kids, staff, uh, probably early May. It's usually two weeks after you send home the initial letters. So uh, probably in early May. That's Remember, that's grades three through 12. And we'll probably look to do that in school with students. It's completely voluntary. And students could even, if they, if they, if they do the survey, they could even say, OK, but I'm not going to answer this question because I don't like this question. OK, fine. Um, with parents, there'll probably be a two-week window that will be open to answer. <clears throat> and, um, the, the sur and with staff, uh, you know, similar type of thing probably do maybe some faculty meeting time or just some other time to do it with staff. But um, uh, it's available in four languages, uh, English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Haitian Creole. And it will be available to, for parents to view prior to the administration because a parent can opt their child out of the survey. Uh, and that'll, it'll, it'll, it'll be sent home in a link and the parent can access the survey via link and we'll probably have it, you know, we'll have it on our website as well. All right, so that's coming within about the next month. All right. And uh, I believe that's all I have. If okay. not, I'll pick up later. Great, thanks. Um, Ms. Uh, Trubo. Yes. So uh, we did submit the budgets um, as we needed to. We're still waiting to hear from the state about our preschool grant. Um, for uh, our Head Start program. Um, what we had to do in terms of the fact that we did not get from them any funding, we had to put our preschool grant in with the amount that we got just for our internal program, which was $2.217 uh, million. 
Um, we're hoping to hear something this week before we have to finalize the budget, which will be at the end of the month. Yeah, we think they made, we, we, we know they made an error. And, and uh, so we contacted our preschool people because they just didn't account for the Head Start folks. And so we're what, it, what does that mean? Like we're short we're about three hundred. We're two? short about two hundred and forty thousand dollars of state yeah. funding for our Head Start. For right? Head Start. That we pay Acelero. Correct. Twenty. It's kids. just the pass. Thirty kids. It's 30 just kids. the It's just the pass for. We're very hopeful that that will be rectified, but we just haven't heard officially yet. Our plan was approved that has Acelero in it. Right. The written plan, but the we haven't received the budget, so we're just hopeful that that will come through soon. Okay. So we're still on, on track to be able to have the budget meeting on the 26th, mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll hear from the county sometime this week about whether the preliminary uh, budget was accepted. Once that happens, we turn it into a user-friendly, and we publish it in the paper, and people will be able to see everything. Great. Okay. Great. That's it. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Anybody have any um, questions for, for Ms. Truba? No? Are we oh. still, I'm sorry, yes. Are we still looking at the user-friendly version? coming out four days before? Yes, has to. It has to come out four days before the public mm -hmm. hearing. For business days, correct? Correct. Okay. So if our hearing's on a Tuesday night, by by that Thursday, something should be in the paper. I'm gonna shoot to do it ahead of time if, if the yep. county approves it sooner. Cool, okay. Okay, great. Um, we're gonna move to uh, 6.1 public comments. Um, uh, for public comments regarding agenda items, all motions are posted on the district website at this time of the meeting. We will now conduct the first of two public comment sessions. The first session will be open for the public comment on agenda items only. The second session will be at the end of the meeting to be on any topic. Um, Ms. Conway, would anybody from the public, there's nobody here in, in, this, in this room. Is anybody virtually like to make a comment? No, President Weinstein, there are no commenters. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Ms. Gilman, would you like to um, uh, do um, the minutes? Yeah, minutes? Certainly. Yeah. Let's approve the minutes. Move to approve the following meeting minutes from March 22nd, our work meeting. Move to approve the meeting minutes in accordance with Board of Education Bylaws 0168, recording of board <coughs> meetings. Uh, also, our executive session minutes from March 22nd. 2022, 7.2, move to approve the following meeting minutes uh, for March 22nd, 2022, our regular meeting uh, in accordance with bylaw 0168, recording of board meetings. And 7.3, move to approve the meeting minutes in accordance with Board of Ed bylaw 0168 from our regular meeting and our executive session meeting uh, minutes from March 29th, 2022. Are there any questions or corrections, concerns about our minutes? I'll second. Okay, thank you, Ms. Torrella. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Motion carries. Thanks, Ms. Gilman. You're welcome. Um, Natalie, financial management and resource services. Okay, we have uh, 12 items this evening, uh, five for Five will be making a motion to vote uh, and the rest for discussion. 8.1, move to approve the acceptance of the preschool expansion aid funds in the amount of $2,217,120 for the 2022-23 school year. Move to approve solutions, sorry, 8.2, move to approve solutions architecture to provide architectural services for the HVAC replacement and curtain wall projects at the TOIS for a total cost of $325,690. 8.3, move to approve the use of facilities in accordance with the attached memo dated April 5th, 2022. 8.4, move to approve the purchase of one used 2018 Chevrolet Express cargo van from Automotive Avenues LLC at the cost of $30,591 for the facilities department, the lo lowest of three quotes as attached. 8.5, move to approve the shredding of hard drives, HDD, solid state drives, SSD, and tapes by legal shred for the total cost of $10,546.50, the lowest of three quotes as attached. 8.6, Board of Ed and Administration will discuss writing off outstanding checks. 
total write-off is $43,793.91. 8.7, Board of Ed and Administration will discuss rating off of food service items. Net impact is a write-off of $25,588.43 of receivables owed to the district. 8.8, Board of Ed and Administration will discuss the shared services agreement for school bus mechanic services between Mammoth Ocean Educational Services Commission and the Township of Ocean Board of Ed for the period of April 30th, 2022 through June 30th, 2022 in accordance with the attached. 8.9, Board of Ed and Administration will discuss an agreement with Mammoth Ocean Educational Services Commission to provide instructional, special education and transportation aid placements as possibly needed for the period of July 1, 22 through June 30th, 23. As per below, 8.10 Board of Ed and Administration will discuss an agreement with Mammoth Ocean Educational Services Commission for non-public school instructional services for every student succeeds act ES ESSA funds for the 2022-23 school year in accordance with the attached agreement. 8.11 Board of Ed Board of Ed and Administration will discuss an agreement with Mammoth Ocean Educational Services Commission for non-public school instructional services for individuals with disabilities education act IDEAB funds for 2022-23 school year in accordance with the attached agreement and 8.12 board of ed and administration will discuss the submission of the grant application for the 2022 safety grant program through the njsig moc ssif subfund for identified safety and security facility upgrades in the amount of $21,084 for the period of July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. Uh, may I have a second on 8.1 through 8.5? Second. I have a question on 8.5 after the second. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, you know, we always talk about shared services. Uh, does the does the town also shred their hard drives and yes. tapes? Can we go in with them on the- This is a lot. Mike hasn't done this in a very long time. What so we call the, this is a lot, like this is years and years worth of old hard drives and Mike wanted to shred. He wants to destroy them just in case there's any information left on them, which he feels confident. He probably has 90% of the information removed, um, but- this so this is yeah it's not something we could the town doesn't shred their hard drives they don't shred the hard no drives. we when we did the shredding for all the boxes here mm -hmm. we all use the same right yeah i thought so mm -hmm. but not for the hard drive yeah this is very specific mm -hmm. thank you are we contractually ob obligated or um not contractually like statutory obligated to to destroy things yes and I so what so we much. haven't done it for a couple of years there, there's a there's a whole process you have to um uh, there's a state website called Artemis, mm -hmm. and you have to go onto Artemis and you have to say what you're shredding. And you have to follow retention rules relative to what the state puts together. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to go in, the state has to approve us doing this. And once they do it, then we'll go forward to do, to destroy what we can destroy. What's, what's more of an issue is making sure you're holding on to certain information for a particular amount of time. Yeah, some things years, are seven right. years, yeah. something, you know, so yeah. when you destroy it after that isn't as critical as just making sure you don't destroy it before that. Right. Okay. I'm more positive so, that this is all things. Sorry. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So, did we want to? Did you want us to vote on one through five? And what did you? Yes. Wait, what, I, I didn't know if there was any more questions. To, Wait, I might. Yes. Um, no, 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 no. Oh, wait, you said you wanted to discuss anything from eight point six to eight. So, oh yeah. I mean, does anybody have any questions? With what I'm doing with the write-offs of the checks? Yes. Well, that I, I okay. Think, yeah. Can you explain that? All sure. Right? So, um, typically, what happens? Um, outstanding checks. We try to reach out to the vendors um, and and tell them Do you have an outstanding check for uh, you know things that we purchased or services. Um, after trying to reach them several times, what we do is we send a note and we basically tell them, look, you know, we're canceling these checks. If you want payment, you need to call us so that we could, we could pay you. All right. So that's what we've been doing now. Now, this probably has not taken place. And I want to say close to five years. So things go back to 2018. Um, Wouldn't that affect our, our 
budget? It's not considered material. So the accountants did not consider this a finding and they knew about the balances. I'm just choosing to clean everything up at this point in time. It's not enough to matter. It's $40,000, you know, on a budget of 90 million. Just a clarification. So, so the amount that you're, um, the amount that you're so-called writing off, those are over multiple years. Oh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what I'm going to do, that what I'm putting in place is after six months, if the check is not cashed, mm -hmm. you know, we should be writing that check off yeah. and contacting the vendor. Good. So I don't, I don't want to wait. Um, you know, so, so excuse me, Ms. True, but does this include also parents that we mail checks yes. for transportation? Correct. Eight, That's eight, what eight, I was saying. Uh, yes. like there were quite a few a lot of them. Parent names, so they just opted not to cash the check. Or, or they really didn't qualify. Most of the, the parent checks all came back. So we did list how many of these checks are sitting in our safe because when we mailed them, the parents didn't live at that location. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Grace What's the difference between the ones highlighted in yellow? Nothing. That was the ones that we have in the board office. The oh. checks that have been because, come back to our location. Because the address is not known. For staff, though. Yeah, but I mean, absolutely. I well, no, and, and the, those Phyllis is reaching out saying we're voiding these checks. Really, the, the bank shouldn't be cashing checks that are older right. than six right. months old. Right. So this is this is the right, this is the right thing to do. It's, it's it's cleaning up the books. And you know, we are doing the due diligence and the outreach, and the accountants agree that this should be done. Okay. Okay. And the, the food, sorry, the food uh, services. That's the net, yep. That's people who haven't paid their lunch bill. Correct. So we have to take a, that, that we have to take a, a write off on. So um, some we owe and some owe us. But again, this has not been touched. I talked to Jackie. Um, it hasn't been done for over three years. And okay. all of the children have since graduated. So there's no way you're going to collect the money if, if they're not in school anymore. So the process now, Jackie today actually has sent a note to, to uh, the principal of the high school and her assistant and said, these lunch balances have got to be cashed before kids get diplomas and are, are paid. And we realized in the last yes. couple of years we with COVID and been you know, very lenient in yeah. that regard because of the pandemic. Right. Yes. And, and we just literally uh, last, I don't know if it was last month or this month, we're looking at the food service policy and Jackie's making sure that she follows that guidance going forward. Alex? Yeah, because it's in our policy. That's right. For discussion. Correct. Also. Correct. Alex, you have okay, a question? Yeah, two questions. Um, if some of these are over three years, mm -hmm. isn't the onus on us for not having followed up with, with, and you're saying some kids might not get their diploma if they have an outstanding No, no, this, 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 the kids graduated. So. This is us cleaning everything up. The ones that she sent out today were just for the students that are graduating in the 21-22 school year that still owe balances. But do any of those balances predate September 1st of this year? No. Okay. No. Okay. Now, okay. And then my second question is, why are there a lot of um, deal school um, deal school chart or checks on here or because owed money? We and do, I know we do. We do the sh shared service for them. But why isn't like why are why aren't they why isn't deal school paying us like why aren't they paying first like you know what I'm saying this like, is for things that you have to buy no, no. so we're allowing students to buy potato chips and different things that aren't part of the free meals that we've been providing over the past two and a half years so you know Jackie and I had a very long our uh, Sodexo or mm -hmm. our food service company we had a long conversation on that and I, you know if 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 a student is in arrears we would never hold back any food yeah but I said to her you know after a certain amount of time two weeks I think our policy says ten business days you're not going to allow them to buy potato chips or unless they have the cash in hand to pay for it so Which you know we're, we're really looking at what we're doing and and the operation and trying to you know, fix the situation and make sure that everybody stays current so that there's not a situation where I have to get a principal involved in holding, a, you know, a diploma and saying, well, you have to pay your, your meal charges first. And there's, there's quite a few in here, over $1,000. Yes. There's a lot. No yes. Gonna write years and years it hasn't been written off. But, and also, the, if I were a deal parent, 
I wouldn't care I either. A meeting with Pierre so Morrow. we I, need to yep. be more on top of yep. deal right. as part of our contract. Well, I, correct? She wants us to continue to deliver the food to her um, in deal. Uh, so Jackie, what she does is she prepares the food here. Mm -hmm. we, we pay for the driver to go there. Um, and it's been as a courtesy because we're not allowed to charge for it. Um, but by the state, because everybody's free and reduced right now. Yeah. So, you know, but we're paying uh, our people and our guests also correct, to go. Over correct. There. Correct. So what I'm going to have a conversation with her on is I want Sodexo to work directly with her. Um, we'll do something, but that there has to be some type of reciprocation between the two districts. So I'll, I'll let you know how that okay. all works out. But if we're going to continue to do that, can't that be on the contingency that they pay? The Absolutely, <laughs> that's part of what I'm talking to her. So about. this thirty-eight thousand that's here is not really going to be thirty-eight thousand. We think we'll recoup some of that. If I can, deal. but I don't know if the kids over there have. But the district's not going to be accountable. Point, I, that's irrelevant. Yeah, we're not making a deal with Johnny. We're making a deal with the school. Yeah. Their school should make good on that. Their this board of ed should pay us. We don't have a contract. And they need to. We don't have a contract. Then I think we need one. Of That's what I'm working on. We never had a contract again? We do. That we would, that we would it, it, it was in the past, it was, we charged like a nominal fee mm -hmm. above the driver and, and. No, but we're talking about for, if, if, if I'm Joey and I go through the line at deal and I say, I want a cookie and I want chips. But that's not included on the bill, and so now I have a two dollar and fifty cent balance. Then deal school should be paying deal deal board of ed should be paying mm -hmm. us two dollars and fifty cents for Johnny if Johnny's parents aren't going to pay that. Yeah, correct. That's exactly. what needs to be. That's I'm not, not in the contract. Okay, well that needs to go in the contract. I'm not worried about. I'm I agree. not worried about the rest of it. I'm worried about. I agree. Right, and I'm not worried about a kid getting lunch. That's of course. No, and the lunch is being paid for. It's the extra. Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. We've also, we've also always had. Yeah, Tina, you're, always you're, had. Ba you're basically you. Ba you know the top. You know the issues. Absolutely. And you're going to come back to us Absolutely. and tell us what actually happened. Well, I'm going to change the contract, and it's going to read that that the, that the school board is going to be accountable yeah, for any it. unpaid balances at the end of the year, as of like. This, this year, year. well, yeah. this year is done. Well, I mean, right, I, it'll be for the 22 23 school, even year. if they can split the difference of what they yeah. owe, yeah, like really, like some resolution. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, on am for the vehicle purchase. Yes. Is that going from the 2020 this year? Okay, okay, right, I didn't. Um, you have another question? Yes, so you can take your time. Um, hey, Ms. Uh, yeah, Ms. Gilman, would you like to ask a question? Just that the a la carte items, because that's what Jackie was called, and that's in our, hold on our one, policy. Hold on one second. Yeah. Are you ready? No, he was asking a question. Okay. No, just just yeah. making a comment that in our policy and, and what you're talking about, these a la carte items have nothing to do with the student getting Correct. 100%. full lunch. We so never deny. Extras, we do never deny the student. Ever deny. Correct. And that that needs to Correct. be clear. Mm -hmm. But these other items that are that are extraneous, or you know, that the, right. the kids want extra, you certainly don't want to deny that. But does it pop up on their account mm -hmm. that okay. they're negative? They can't charge it. They can't charge. Right. It. So that's why we said if there's, there's not cash in hand, you know. But we we always. What Jackie is doing is after 10 days of somebody being in arrear, she's sending letters, right? Then we'll do it again. So there is multiple notifications okay. that are going to the parent. Okay. Did you, have, did you find you. your question, Alex? I did on facilities fees. Isn't that part of eight something? Yeah, uh, 8.3. Mm -hmm. um, I know I brought this in my email to everyone, or I mean, yeah. not everyone. Yeah. Um, I really think we need to start charging more for facilities fees. And um, I don't know if it's as principle in, on principle or something, but I, I can't keep agreeing to these facility fees if we're giving these groups that make thousands of dollars zero. And they are, they, like a lot of these sports groups, I'm, I'm being generic, are ruining some parts of our fields. And we are letting them get full access for like $150. It's, it's outrageous. And um, uh, I, I can't. Well, is there one specifically that you're referring to on here? All the, anyone that, ha, that uses any field at the middle and, and, and intermediate school, I mean, intermediate and high, and then the turf. When, when Ocean Soccer had their tournament this past summer, other, other soccer clubs from other towns complained how bad that middle school's fields were. 
because they're used so bad so much and like they're used to high heaven yeah. and there's no like that i don't know yeah. And we charge them $150. Well, I mean, that's the like outrageous. Really, the fields have been a problem for a long time. Right? I mean, the reason why the, the bees have, I and mean, we've gone through this use of facilities policy since I've been on the board yeah. hundreds of times, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the, the reason why the, the, the use for our town youth sport programs is because it is taxpayers that are paying money everywhere. But I'm not against talking about, we, we talked about last year when we had that conversation, I was thinking about that the other day, that we talked about going to these groups and saying, you guys want better fields, let's figure out something mm -hmm. that we can do, right? Whether it's seating, the, you know, buying seat, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I, I think that it wouldn't be a bad thing for the facility, I mean, for the financial committee, if everybody agrees, you know, or you'll ask that, but to have a conversation about maybe some of the ideas of strategically to get these, you know, I, I don't know that the fees need to go up. I think that it's more the, we want to recruit, we want to fix this problem. Let's figure out a way we can fix it together. I thought, I thought in 2019, we did, we did talk to them. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you remember that? Jim? Yes, and that we, Over we, the years, we've, I mean, they've certainly different organizations have certainly given yeah. monies to to the district to make repairs and, and upgrade facilities it it's probably been a while yeah, but, the, and, but, Denise the, says but that I think... every time and, and denise knows because i'll say this to her when she's here she says every time the soccer club always gave blah, blah, blah. since i've been on the board for nine years there's never been a donation and i'm, I'm saying from anybody okay. that said it's been a while so it's yeah. been, you know, so it's it's to say, what do you guys think needs to happen here, and let's figure out a way to make it happen. You know? Yeah. So I think the on the field side, it is about the, it's about the town soccer, right? The, it's it's about not the town, the town soccer. soccer. It's a club. It's not all the, the students, uh, and it's, it's not, not a town rec. rec. Yeah, it's, it's not right. It's, that's not it's, it's not rec. It's not uh, rec. Yeah. Right. That's that's what I meant by yeah. the town. <laughs> Um, uh, so and where we why can we charge per day though? Why? I mean, our rules say first, second, and third priority groups should be charged the nonprofit fees of 100 to 175 dollars a day if it's not infrequent. I mean, it's like is it all by the way, 182 days or whatever that they use yeah. field one, two, three, four, five, six? I mean. <laughs> Is it only the fields? I'm pretty sure our turf field has been affected by it. How much we no. only, only is it only like we have track here? We have uh, yeah. wayside. You know, everybody's using these other facilities, right? I mean, it, it sounds yeah, like yeah, we're only really. The they don't use the regular. Like we, it sounds like we're only talking about the athletic fields, right? No, because Saint jo Saint George wants to use. Just use the parking. The um. Surfing. Yeah, but uh, the. St. Anselm wants to use the track, the turf. Um, the summer camps use the turf. Well, yeah, I meant what I meant by I meant the athletic fields. Well, that's part. That's the turf. That's the. Oh, you're uh, including the, turf in with the grass. Yeah, well, the athletic okay. fields, right? Okay. It's the athletic okay. fields, right? Yeah. I was just thinking grass. No, it's the athletic fields. Okay, no. okay. And you know, if we have our fields are an asset to our district, and if we are losing money, which we are as a district. Maybe we shouldn't be giving things for free anymore. You know, it was great while it lasted. But, and I'm saying this as a parent who my kid plays soccer. So my Me fees too. are going to go up as, the, as a parent, right? Like I get that. And I'm not saying we need to charge thousands and thousands of dollars, but I, I'm open to looking at the policy. Yeah. Um, and we can probably go back to paperwork. Um, I know that when I was on, like we, we broke down. So say, and I only know this because I was part of AYF forever. AYF uses the turf maybe six times in this, you know, in a season. So that's the only time they're on our facility grounds, you know, soccer's more, but also we, like we said, hour, like we broke it down every way. We were like, okay, there's six days, they're 108, like you said, 182, whatever. We broke it down by, okay, there's six days, but they're there for, you know, six hours. So, okay, 36 hours, you say on that, you know, and you can, you can definitely look at it in that type of a way. And that's where we came to you know, when we did the $150 season or the seasonal fee, you know, we came down to that, but maybe the seasonal fee goes up. But I think like, like you said, if, if, I mean, if the, whatever you think and, and people want, I am to your point, I think it's worth having the conversation, the finance committee having the conversation to see if it's worth. I think the, I think, so look, I have a, a lot, obviously a, 
I was, I was with that for 10 years, I think it was a coach or something at the, for United Soccer, right? So, um, uh, and I, I think that there is a little bit of a, a challenge because not everybody who plays travel is from the town, right? Um, so it definitely mm -hmm. has a... That's what the, the policy says that it's six if sixty percent. I'm sure it's over sixty. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, I would say it's probably like eighty five, right? Eighty five mm -hmm. what? Percent. Okay. Eighty five percent of probably town. town. Oh, I don't Is know. It out of town? No, it's in town. Oh, it's in oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I think once you get to well, when uh, you're thinking about per team, as they get older, it, may, it separates a little bit more. But when they're little, they're it's mostly ocean, you know. Oh, when they are little, yeah. yeah. When you get to like ten or eleven, when you get to eleven, it starts changing. Because the bigger field, you have to recruit more kids and, and all that stuff. So, um, okay. So, uh, what are we up for? Um, are we up for uh, talk, well, I, talking? To, I mean, talking to them? Yeah, you see what other is, districts do too. This matches the current policy, so I don't know that we can say no to this. Well, I'm more looking at that because that's yeah. one of the policies that we have to re up now. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, you know, we'll. I'll take a look at that. I'll talk to John. I'll have John talk to people in surrounding districts to see what they're doing. Who's John? On people. Bosman? John Bosman. Okay. Correct. And uh, you know, we'll come back with a proposal on that. So I guess the, the I guess the challenge right now is that this is really for for May, June, and July. Yeah. Of yeah. Two, right. Yeah. Which, um, frankly, it's the summer months that that kill those fields. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. So uh, well, the rainy times. Also, we've yeah. said we've, we've said in the past when we've done a policy that listen, we approve you, but just understand there could be a change in policy in the next, you know, six weeks, whatever, you know, you yeah. can say yeah. for June and July. Yeah. May will be whatever May is, and then just, just so just so you know, there could possibly be. So maybe we approve like through the end of the school year or something. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. It's uh, they submitted this under the current yeah. policy. Yeah. I think we I have would to be fair it. and. But because I mean. Because we've been so generous, giving three months at a time, twenty-four days out of a month. But when why wouldn't about, Why wouldn't any group ask for about, three months? When you think about the schedule you get, right? When you think about your soccer coach, your yeah. your son join the soccer team, and you find out on April first that this is the team. Yeah, you want your schedule. Yeah. Oh, true. It might so have to do with scheduling. Yeah, I see you know what you're saying. So, so okay. you can't say you can't. Right. That's why they do three months at a time. But you can't say it's June and then all of a sudden. Right. And then July. But, okay. but okay. they don't. Okay. But they don't. Okay. Let's have uh, games. Okay. Let's, uh, maybe we just okay. say okay. for the next. Let's just. Let's just. I mean, I don't want. Let's just kind of dues to go up. So let's let's um. They shouldn't. So um. Let's kind of let my my recommendation. We can we can all kind of talk about this. Is is uh I think we should start the discussion with them on the Ocean Township, the, the United Soccer League and, and Association and start talking to them. I think, uh, um, I think, you know, we have a long-standing relationship with them, right? They, if it is mostly the town, I, my opinion, and we could all kind of, you know, obviously have a straw poll on this, is that we basically say, let's honor it May, May June, July. Let's, let, let's have some, let's have a, a plan in place that has something else as we head into the fall into the fall season mm -hmm. okay and yeah. so that way we're right. and but because they might we, we don't know their situation either right and so we should we should yeah. find out about it before we mm -hmm. we start you know yeah. getting before we put that right before we do something too much out of the right field um so on all the other so on all this so on this one we're going to approve but we are going to say so who's going to talk to them is it is it myself? Is it? I think you need to have a, the way it's been handled in the past, and the way I think would be prudent is to have a finance committee meeting with Mr. Bosman's Tina, and discuss what we think the ask is going to be, and what we think the ask Before should say to the to board that, is. Because right? if the if we just if we think about it and we say the ask should instead be let's improve our fields, this is what Mr. Bosman says we need to do to improve our fields. This is the cost. What can you contribute towards that cost? Right. Or do we want to, or do you want to raise the fees? And I think that that needs to be a finance committee meeting to then come back to the board and have a, a, a discussion about what it should be from there. Um, yeah, except it might feel a little bit like because we're only going to this one group, right? I mean, it's I this, think you're no, I think no. you should talk to. I think you should talk to. I but that's the but that's the group that's mostly. But be right, I mean, right. but basketball uses it too, and, and we pay one hundred and fifty dollars for like one time for yeah, it. people use the basketball. I think it was just one. Group. Yeah, no, I think I mean, in this thing that, that it needs to be looked at too. That 
if, since we're on use and we're saying, <laughs> talking about this, like mid mammoth gets the courts and the and the gyms when we have mm -hmm. staff that would like to do stuff with our students but can't do like after school extra stuff because mid mammoth has uh, taken all the <laughs> gymnasium every gym and has every night and from you know 3 p.m till midnight and you know i think that it's well unfortunately i think what they do is they just book Right. everything and they wind up not because it's free a lot but they book it but they book it so whereas somebody who has booked before and has called then to say i'm now not using the turf on these field these days please call ocean united soccer and tell them the turf's open because they're who we're usually you know in the yeah. fall who ayf is is partnering with you know they don't always give back the gym and so and, and it's not just that, it's other places that don't always give back. And I think there's things like that that need to be looked at too, that, you know. The, the, only, the only thing that, the only thing is that the, the difference between the gyms and the fields is the fields quickly become in bad shape, whereas the gyms don't get into that spot. That's why, that's my distinction. Between I agree them. with you, but then that does kind of only limit it to certain clubs. So it might, I wouldn't want so it to see it have an appearance the of, and see what we, and let just finance round people it and kind of come back with some some more okay discussion. With, I mean, Natalie, are you okay with that? Yeah. You, yeah. You'll you'll kind of take it from here yeah. and uh, oh, can I just get a show of hands? Is that okay? That's, oh, that's Natalie, your committee. Yeah. Natalie, the finance committee. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Oh, I think I'm on it. All right. Okay, great. Just give yourself a sure. But for, yes. but for now, but for now, we're going to say that we're we're okay with how this is, right? We don't need a stipulation on this, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Vote. Finance committee is Natalie, Amy, and Alex. I didn't even know that when extra work. All right. Anything, anything else we want to discuss before we um, vote on the uh, one through five? Um, eight, one to eight, five. I don't want this to make into a long discussion. Solutions architects, we're calling them consultants. Why are they a consultant instead of just calling them like Architect our record. architect of record for the blah blah blah. Pro. There are architect. There are they're consultants because they're vendors. They're not employees, so they are the architects for that specific project. Okay. That they're providing architectural services, yeah. right? But that they told us that they needed that we needed anyway in a previous. Like they did it. We paid them for a study that also said that that they determined that we need all these things. Right? Wasn't didn't they didn't they give us a study that said the township of Ocean needs a new HVAC on the middle school? Um, I don't know if they did a study. This was before I got here. We we had always targeted these two projects to be paid for by a piece of the grant. Okay. Right. I mean, there are the, all the original products in the in the school. So, uh, right. Into that, that's what I think the bigger issue was that the MERV 13 filters don't fit in what we're replacing. And that's bringing it up to what, you know, the, the DOE is saying that we should have for better air quality yep. in the building. Okay, let's vote. Let's, um, let's vote on 8 1 through. Eight four is that right? Eight five, I think. Eight five, yep. sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Beal. Yes. Ms. Gilman. Yes. Ms. Hayes. Eight one. Yes. Eight two. Eight three. Eight four. Yes. Eight two. Since I'm against the HVAC, I'm voting no. Okay. So wait. Eight one. So eight two is no. Everything else is yes. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Um, Mrs. McGovern. Yes. Ms. Tellerico. A2, no. Everything else, yes. Okay. Ms. Uh, Ms. Tortorello. Yes. Mr. Weinstein. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Um, Ms. Gilman, instruction. Yes, education. there are two items for instruction, education, and student activities. 9.1, move to approve the attached memorandum dated April 5th. 
2022, staff professional development activities in accordance with district policy 6471, NJAC 6A23A-7. The attendance at said activities is fiscally prudent and will promote the delivery of instruction and or will further the efficient operation of the district. Reimbursement for travel and related expenses shall be according to the Department of the Treasury guidelines in NJOMB Circular 06-02 and A-87. 9.2, our school calendar is amended. Board of Education and Administration will discuss amending the 2021-2022 school calendar to reflect an adjustment to the last day of school for teachers and students. A copy of the amended calendar is attached. Last day for teachers and students will now be Tuesday, June 21st, 2022. It was to have been June 22nd, 2022. Uh, adjustment to regular monthly board meeting might be needed as a result of the adjustment to the calendar. Any discussion on this? It, it, I believe it said- I, I would like to discuss it, yes. I'll give you a second <laughs> on 9.1. On 9.1. Yeah. Um, so we only used one emergency day. We don't anticipate any further snow, or hopefully. Yeah, now you said <laughs> hope. <laughs> we hope, um, even though it did snow a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, no, we don't anticipate, and and uh, so we can. Uh, it's it's the consensus. I spoke with uh, administration. I spoke with the association. Uh, we'd like to take a day off the end of the school year, which would move just move the date from the twenty second to the twenty first. Uh, the only issue that that uh, creates is that is a scheduled regular board meeting night. So the, 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 the board could do one of two things. The board could amend the board meeting calendar. We don't have a meeting now on the 7th. They're going to be the 14th and the 21st. We could just make it the 7th and the 14th. Or you could, since you're all, since so many I, of you will so get together. I discuss this. So my recommendation is that we um, move the board meeting to the um, to June 7th. And... Uh, what, you want Unless to you don't mind with like Amy and I perhaps not yeah. being here. I don't know. You can certainly move forward if you like. Oh, well, I just have a question when our first July meeting is, because isn't uh, that- I think it's the 12th. Yeah, so, it's the 12th. so that's my only concern. If we, needed, if, we, if we needed to have a meeting to approve hires or something like that, we can figure out how to call a quick meeting together if we wanted to do that. And that time is usually- Why wouldn't we do the 14th and 28th? Because I will tell you that a lot of- Oh, everybody goes on vacation. Are okay. Taking much needed. What about the twenty first? Did you say that was an option? Twenty first. That will be called graduation. I'm sorry, the twentieth. The twentieth. Oh, Monday. Monday. Uh, we were, we Monday. said that they were probably moving it. The date wouldn't be. Um, the day the day would be. It's always moving the end it's of school year. It's always. Yeah, but that we don't. Every year the graduation date is different. I think it's always been the feeling of the board, and of course you could change this, but it's always been the feeling to keep the board meetings on a consistent That's night basis, for. Yeah you know, for the public's, for the benefit of the public. So but you can change it and do whatever you want. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here on the 21st. If it's the 21st, I don't think Dr. Stavank would No, I won't. Having graduates. Yeah. So yeah. I would say I'm, I'm fine. Very welcome. Yeah. You whatever you I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. Um, well, um, well, well, actually, what's well, a discussion, right? April 11th. Yeah. Will be the says final we'll, announcement. It says we'll make a decision on or about April 11th. Okay. We wait till the hopefully the, the snow possibilities have ended. <laughs> it snowed on the 12th. I know that. So, the, it is a discussion topic, but from what I could see right now, we're all. So I can prove it next week. Pretty much okay with the seventh. Okay. All right. Can the twenty so, first items go to the fourteenth? Yeah. Um, sure. I don't know. You know, um, there might be things related to student matters and stuff that wouldn't go to the. You're saying 14th. to not have two work to not have two meetings in June. Right. If they're a week apart, how lengthy could that agenda be to just add it to the fourteenth? She's saying oh, add whatever was going to be on the 21st, add it to the 14th, right? Yeah. That's, that's what we would do. Yeah. That's a better idea. Well, that's a good idea. So and the 14th might be just have one meeting, you just have one meeting in June? Just have one last. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think we can try it. If things are <laughs> we don't need to put another one, then we do. But we'll wait so that means, that means uh, not, to be, uh, not to be a stickler, but that would mean we'd have one meeting over a seven week period. Yeah, I don't, I don't that, like that. That doesn't, uh, I don't- One I, meeting I don't, over, I don't, I don't see the seven week. 
May 24th. Yeah, May, May 24th. 24th. And then you wouldn't have the June 7th. June 14th and then July 12th. So you go all the way to uh, July 12th. Right. So you have one meeting between May 24th and July. I don't know. I don't like yeah, this. That, yeah. And the June 14th. No, it's, it's three. You'll have a meeting on the 24th and then one, two, three weeks later, a meeting on the 14th. And then one, two, three, four weeks later. Like I said, so you'd have one meeting. You'd have one meeting in seven, in seven or eight seven weeks, weeks, right? That's so too just long. Exactly what. Don't we need certain work sessions in order to talk about things sometimes before we were to vote on need, the 14th uh, anyway? Need, no. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to make, I'm, my, I feel more comfortable with, uh, with June 7th. Well, yes. so I think that the 14th is the retiree okay. meeting. So you're not going to be able to. Usually, but yeah, there's not a lot of stuff. Right. Yeah. You're not going to make no. long work and then have like a nine o'clock retiree meeting. It's the nicest thing to do. We would invite the retirees on the 14th. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So if we didn't have a seven, we'd only have the one meeting to do a long yeah. work to plus gender. retiree plus yeah. whatever else. So, uh, no, I'm going to be, I'm, I think I'm in favor for the seventh, the June 7th. So we have two meetings in June. Mm -hmm. Two meetings yes. in June, right? I support that. I, I do. Yeah. Also. Everybody okay or that's fine with me. Right, we're gonna we're gonna bring it to we're gonna have it Both. voted that's on. Cool. Next yeah. Right. Yeah. Next Grace you with the seven. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Um let's vote on the um before we vote, I, I have a question on the uh professional development. The Orton Gillingham uh training. There there are lots of teachers going for that mm -hmm. uh reading training. Is that supplemental to our wonders program? So that's a, a separate reading program. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's... It's supportive, it's supportive. of students yes, who absolutely. are not getting... That was a lot. Yeah, well, I mean... It, I, that's I a lot of teachers at, at 12.75 apiece. And I know the Orton Gillingham is wonderful, but it, again, makes me question the wonders. Well, we've, all, we've trained people in Orton Gillingham. I know. It's, for it's, years. Right. Prior to wonders and all that. But it's not just, just many. Just good... No, no, we've we've done it a is. Lot. It's a great. It's a great it's, reading it's just program. Good, it's just good skill set. Yeah, for our been doing it more lately. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. but that's that's a lot. Uh, just wondering, you know, again about the wonders program. I don't think it. I don't think one has to. Just do a comment. Okay. okay. Uh, does somebody want a second? Second. Yeah, I said you seconded. I said start. Okay. okay. I didn't hear. I'm sorry. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Ms. Gillen? Yes. Ms. Hayes? I apologize. We're just 9.1? Yep. yep. Yes. Uh, Mrs. McGovern? Yes. Ms. Tellerico? Yes. Ms. Tortorello? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? Yeah. Uh, yes. Sorry. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, Grace Ann. Um, Personal. Personal. I think we could just say we voted on it. So I move to approve 10.1 through 10.5. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Ms. Beal? Yes. Ms. Gilman? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Ms. McGovern? Yes. Ms. Tetlerico? Yes. Ms. Tortorello? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? Yes. Planning and construction. Yes. Bob the Builder. He's, uh, this is, the is Mr. Haddon here too? Or? He is yeah. not. However, I have his file. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, we, both, we both have talked to him. Yeah. So. I would like to thank Mr. Haddon because I, I did reach out to him um, yesterday to ask him to you know, go back through my timeline that I had in my head. And as you see, as, as I attached to the documents, uh, Mr. Haddon had an, a much more concise um, timeline that I had. So if, if you go back and you look, you know, obviously this has been a topic for the board for much longer than actually April of 2018. Um, in fact, Mr. Haddon, who, rem who remembers all, um, reminded me that, that Ms. Dorsett got on the board to save the building uh, many years ago. So there's been, it has been talked about for probably over 20. I've been here for nine years. It's been talked about every time. So for probably 20 years, it's been talked about. Um, this goes through the timeline from April of 2018 through um, January of 2019, I mean, of 2020. Um, I will say that in 18, I was on the, I was on the committee and did search um, 
around town a lot, as you can see through the, the timeline at different places that we thought we could have shared services and what we could possibly do. Um, we also had an appraisal done in 2018, um, which you see, and um, said that the value was $3,400,000. Now, I think even when that appraisal came out, we were all like, mm, we could definitely get more than $3 million for this, this plot of land. Um, one of the things that came out towards the end of the discussion before it stopped with COVID and everything else was possibly subdividing this land and maybe keeping the building, but selling off what's in the back. So there's been discussion um, that kind of came up and then stopped because of you know the world when the world stopped. So the the things that I that I think from here is that we obviously would need a new appraisal, which um, Ms. Truba did reach out to Miss um, to the Gagliano appraisal group that did the last appraisal. We would need a new appraisal of this land. I think we also need. Um, one of the things I was telling Mr. Weinstein that I, you know, as I said, like the 3.4 3 million is not what this would sell for, right? So we need fair market value appraisal as well. So this is what you would get if, if this was still zoned as, as whatever. Now we would never change the zoning before we would sell it. Um, in my opinion, I don't think we would go through that, that process. It would be whoever bought it, but we would want to sell it as if, you know, if they're going to put you know, a parking lot or houses or something, we, we don't want to sell it for 3 million and then they get 3 million per house, right? Like we want to make what we would need. So I think we need a, a new appraisal. Um, I also, there is in here also um, the, um, in the appraisal, you see kind of what the building is, is about. Um, we also had Solutions Architects years ago talk to us about if we put a, if we dropped a building on, um, middle school land where could we drop it and how much would that cost and i think we also need to go back to solutions and say figure out if one of those if we were to sell if one of those plans was what we wanted to go to what is the value what is the cost of that now right because we have to make sure that if we're going to sell land that is valuable that we're not going to be spending over and we're going to have we don't want to we don't want to sell for three million dollars and spend three million dollars we want to sell and save money to go in in other budgets right so there's a, obviously a lot to talk to um go through and, and meet about <laughs> as a committee and and go from there i just want to make sure that before we start this process that you know there's a consensus um to start the process so, so let me just let me just add some yeah. so so um, the, um, the, I think the, my, my opinion is that we have, um, you know, the building and the land around it, and we never really um, got an appraisal that maybe broke it up into two parts, right? One, an appraisal for this whole land and building. And the other is what would happen if we just kept the building? And decided to do something with the land. So I think, I think we, uh, my opinion is that we probably need to take that step first, just to even understand what that looks like. And then if it's something that is, in, that if either of those options sound encouraging, or sound like that's a, a path to pursue, then we could go down the road of, okay, what, where would, you know, what would happen to the administration building? Would we have to revamp this? Would we decide to move out of, you know, give the whole thing up and then go to another place? We'd have to kind of look at it, maybe not boiling the ocean to some extent, but let's just kind of step through it at least to get the appraisal and get an understanding of what's feasible in keeping this building and what it would mean to keep this building. Right. And, and I also mean, think right? it'd be interesting to find out too, because, you know, I know that when I was in, small amount of talks about selling the back and leaving the front, you know, keeping the front or whatever. I didn't look at until while we were talking earlier, I was looking at the aerial photo photos up here that are in this yeah. report. And it actually seems like there are, I wonder if there's an entrance to the back part because it does go to a lot of streets back there, right? Yeah. Where they, but I'm so not, there, there are, yeah. there are a lot of streets, yeah. but that's again, the person that purchases this. I just want to know if there's a curb cut somewhere in the back it'd be interesting to know if there's a curb yeah. cut so that they wouldn't have to come through the front of our building yeah. that's what i'm thinking it might be. Just, just to just to be put a finer point on this the right? area on the side 
there is a little street. To the back. Yeah, right, but I would just be, I, that's one thing when he's looking at it, if you can find out if there is, because that's just something else to know that we wouldn't need to sell the front and the side. We could sell just from the middle. It looks like basically the middle of Maine, probably like the middle of that, that, that T on the back, let's say back is, on, is where it looks like the lot is the lot lines. Yeah. So it's just so the reason I'm suggesting that those two appraisals, those two steps. Um, strategies being looked at is because um, moving out of here, right, would be a big expense no matter where we went. And we'd have to kind of consider that. And um, the, you know, like the over, like the bigger arching problem in the, is that this facility is somewhat outdated, not, you know, not ADA friendly and not, uh, you know, and somewhat bigger than what we need. And, you know, so it, it has a lot of, it has a lot of things with that. Um, so, but to have a sober look at it, I think you gotta have, I think I would be more comfortable having both things done first before we started to start to figure out where else we might wanna go and what that looks like. Right. Yeah. So I think that having those, if, if everybody agrees, having those two things done, the appraisal and, and the, you know, the feeling of the, of splitting it or whatever, the information for that before even the committee meets, because there's really nothing to talk about, I would say, until, until we those have that two first, things yeah. are done. Now, Ms. Truman, just, just a, before you ask, Ms. Truman, just out of curiosity here, do you know what it costs to have that last? Um, I, what I did was I reached out and I, I explained to Joe, you did the last appraisal, he looked it up. I said, could you please send me a quote of what it would take to update it to the current market assessment? He has not gotten back to okay. me yet. So as soon as I get that, I'll- And, and do we, would we have to go out for an RFP for somebody to do this appraisal for us? Or is it- I don't think it's, I mean, I would like to leverage who, who we used because it's going to be cheaper. Okay. He has all the data. I mean, okay. it was a 64 page report that he did. Yeah. Okay. All right. and, the, and the bones and the structure of the building didn't change. Okay. All right. Miss Hayes. Um, I don't think we have the this crystal ball to know what real estate is going to be in a year. I think taking the lengthy time for an appraisal is. Um, time that we shouldn't be using. I feel like, I don't, I don't think we should even look at saving this building. I think that's a waste of time even to even look at it. Um, this building will cost way too much to bring it up to code, modernity, anything. Um, I'm a little concerned that if we pay for an appraisal, that that's gonna take six months at a minimum before we do anything, um, before we even vote to do anything. Um, I would like to know personally, what are some of you guys have said that you've had offers come in um, um or like people had expressed interest i think right so yeah, but I, I don't i don't think that i don't think that's anything that can be quantified by any i mean people just can we not ask um like i'm not ask um I mean, has anybody sent us a letter and said, okay. dear Dr. Stefankwitz, if you want to sell this, I'll, I'll if, take it for 10 million. I'll take it no, for 2 million. No, no. Nobody has said that. Okay. Nobody said that. And, and by, the, by the way, the only thing that would happen is if we were doing this, we would do this through an RFP or some process like that. This would not be. Do what? Do if what? we ever decided to do something with this building, we would have to make it so it's a public, it's a, it's a public, mm -hmm. um, process it's it's an rfp it's an asset that's being bought we'd have to have a competitive a competitive but i don't process. i don't think so the law that i looked up says the board has to decide yes. but we don't have to have the public input uh, oh, yes, for any i would no, we don't. i would I talk would about it. No, of course we need the but we don't have to put it to a vote and i don't think no not a vote I, no i'm thinking that we would put this out to an rfp for people to respond on how they Oh, the sale. We would go yeah. through a sale. We'd We'd go through an offer, right? Yeah, yeah. We'd RFP go for sale. That's yeah. different. Like, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, how long did it take for us to go from like zero to get this report? Wasn't it like a year? And I, I don't, I personally don't think moving out of this building, I'm not in the business. You may laugh, but I don't think it would be that expensive to move all of our stuff out of here 
if we're getting millions of dollars for this property. I'm just, I don't think moving out should be any consideration because I think like, that's quick. The biggest issue was maintenance. That's what it's what? Maintenance. maintenance. Yeah, we have land at the, at the middle school. We have land. That's been look at solutions did put together a, a plan to be able to to relocate maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just I don't think there was a collective when when the numbers came back, it didn't make sense. So I, I personally think this is a good thing to bring maybe bring up at the strategic plan too to talk about the facilities so and sure. see well, you know you remember part of what we talked about was the the, the deal test, you know, the uh Palaya Park right. property yeah we had a grant for that we ultimately right. determined was going to be too expensive right. to do and didn't make didn't make a lot of Can sense. Can I answer Alex's sure, sure. question? Yeah. Um, the June twenty first, twenty eighteen, is when we had the proposal for what the appraisal would cost. Okay. Um, I don't know what the next board meeting date was to say like when we actually voted on it, but let's just say that July, like seeing that later. that's graduation, so let's just say July tenth or whatever. Um, and it looks like the appraisal came in. We voted on it in a meeting on September fourth. So it took about two months, let's say, from the time we voted to say yes do the appraisal till the time we saw it as a board now remember and we again, saw the appraisal as a board okay because but you have to remember take out a couple of weeks for summer we could have maybe it could have maybe been back in the office july 15th and mm -hmm. i mean august 15th but we didn't meet until september 4th so uh these are loose dates okay. um, i think splitting up this property is not maximizing first of all alex to your to your point people going around town offering millions of dollars to homeowners and then backing out because of all kinds of reasons. Sure. I would never in a million years accept an offer like that. That would be fiscally mm -hmm. irresponsible. Secondly, we would have yes, to see the funding. Yeah. When they drew out the plans for the intermediate school, awful lot of wetlands. Can't build back there. Mm -hmm. I remember watching or rolling out mm -hmm. the plans and him saying, we have to get DEP permission right. to build back off of 18. So one of the solutions, of course, was to use the intermediate school inside. I'm not sure how uh, feasible that, that is anymore. But back to the uh, appraisal. As I was reading through the report, the 68 pages, so many times he referenced the need for an engineer or a planner. Yeah. Yeah. So in addition to an appraisal, we really need an engineer to come in here and, and look at the building. Maybe it isn't so far-fetched to bring it up to code uh, if we are making money from the sale on the back or you know what do we need to fill in because the land does go uh, down significantly and of course a, a planner you know is it 20 lots you know what's the zoning in this area so there really is a, a lot that needs to go into it and we certainly could not do anything without having the public here and if i remember the last time there were some uh, not heated discussions, but there was a lot of uh, sympathy for this building. It holds a lot of nostalgia for people in town and they do not want to see it leveled. They honestly don't. Uh, many people went to school here. So, uh, you know, would it be irresponsible to just have a vote and say, yes, we need to, you know, level the building because we can make, a, because somebody made an offer of a lot of money. I don't think that's the direction that we should go. So I think we should start with the appraisal, maybe have an engineer and a planner be part of it, and then make our move from there. All right, sure, would you like to make a comment? Um, I, I do think with all due respect, I know we have um, folks in Oakhurst being offered, you know, suitcases of money or whatever for square foot. It's like crazy in Oakhurst. I do think though, um, commercial real estate is way, it's a totally different ball game. Um, so I think if there was anybody interested, it's not just gonna be fly by the state of their pants. It's gonna be people who are truly interested. Um, and while I sympathize with the history of this building, when this was brought up a couple of years ago, we weren't in the dire straits that we are now. Like we don't even have $30,000 to do an esports at the high school or 20,000 to do XYZ at the middle school. So, I mean, I just, I don't see how uh, we don't take it more seriously to make a profit off of this land. I, I wouldn't 
shouldn't say I'm not taking it seriously. And I no, I, I don't mean I don't mean that blanketly. Oh. I mean like I'm just. I just want to like, okay. so, to our range camp. Um, can we maybe because we the town now has an engineer and a planner. Is it possible to talk to them mm. and shared services if maybe they would come in and just. I think we should get the appraisal first and see what makes yeah. sense. Okay. Right. Because I mean, this does, it's going to involve a lot of work. And, yeah. you know, if the board's all in agreement with a direction based on the appraisal coming in and maybe talking about this at the, as the strategic planning session and seeing how the public feels. Mm -hmm. So at least that is also part of, of what the board understands. Then if it makes sense to go forward based on those conversations, then you know, absolutely. I agree 100%. I would reach out to the town first. Because if somebody is going to buy this to optimize it, and you're looking at a builder to put either townhomes or houses, they're going to want to understand what the zone is and what how many how many parcels they're going to be able to split to sell. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's how you're going to maximize the, the, the money that you get for this building. So, so first, um, just, um, I guess we can do a show of hands here of who's for us to um so a show of hands yes if we're if we want to get um this to be appraised um and i'm, I'm going to say that i like to i would uh i although i although i heed some of your thoughts um we i do think we should have two two things done here one is with the building here and one without the building here so i do i do think that that we that we should do that so that's that so if we're all, if we can raise our hand, if we you think- mean an appraisal to sell the entire lot or to sell it into, or just sell one piece and keep one piece? Yes, correct, okay. right. But we would need to understand the zoning of that then. Correct. So right. I'm gonna have to go to the town to see if it can be subdivided. Oh, mm. that's interesting. You see what I'm saying? Right. That's why I think, and I know that the town, doesn't the town have, we have our own planner and so- and yeah. mm -hmm. yes. Yes. yes, yes. So I, I just think so I have to I have to go with the township. I think. Yeah. yeah, it is an R four zone, and I'm pretty sure that can be divided. Okay. I only know that because I'm across the way in an R two zone, which cannot be divided. I'm pretty yeah. sure it can be divided. Planning board. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm just, sure you know, I, I think it also transparency wise, if we're involving the town from the very beginning of, of when we're doing this, is I think a good thing as well. Okay, so. So a, a raise of the hand is that we're okay with going ahead with getting these two appraisals. And talking to town. And talking to yeah. town. Who's what would come after that though? If that's step one, what is step two before I know? Well, first we're gonna well, we would see what we get and then okay. we say, okay, what's step two? Yeah. Right, first oh, we okay. just see we just see where we're at. Okay. It's just it's just more that gotcha. time has passed. New, there's a new economic mm -hmm. situation. So let's no let's Right, we're just gonna say, okay, this is where we're at, and if it if it comes back and it says, you know, this this sounds like a really compelling thing to do, then we say, okay, let's let's maybe take them. Then we take the next step. If they say it's worth a million dollars, we say, okay, thank you, but no thanks. Until it's yeah. worth it. Right. Right. again, you know, whatever. But right. I, think it's I think I think a lot of time was spent also doing um, it was going down this path. Once it's we get fine. that, yeah. once we got that, like. I don't even know if we saw it when we got the three and a half that we wouldn't say yes to that. We went down and went down the next level, which was now yeah. talking about where we're going to put the maintenance, where yeah. we're going to find the building. Like, yeah. I don't want to do right. any of that right. until yeah. we right. see this that first. That makes a lot more sense. Yes. Right. But then it was a year or whatever right. of yes. talking. Right. Because there was a lot of there crazy. was a lot of conversation that sounded like if we only sold for three and a half million, it wouldn't be terrible because we had these other places to go. Now we don't have, I'm going on the premise that we don't have any place that we don't own to go, that we don't have physically under the Board of Education umbrella is at this moment where yeah. I think we can go. So you mean to house maintenance? To only. house anything, to house the people that work in this building, to house maintenance, to house everything. You don't think we have any space to- No, I'm oh. saying that I don't think, I'm not going to any township. Like I personally think that it's it's going to be a place that we already own. It's no, not going to be the town okay. saying, yeah. you can go here. Yes, yes, yes. And so, um, because a lot of time was spent, so, you know, and we found the, the one place that the committee all agreed on. We were all like, oh, I could see us here. This is a great spot. Cindy yeah. Lane, and then it then it wasn't the next yeah. day. So it's like I, I feel like okay. we do what we part. think um, we have, and you know, and I, we also going down the line are going to have to look at you know I know our moments I, are going down, but 
Yeah, I think also, the, I also think whatever comes back for the appraisal motivates us in one way or another, Absolutely. right? And it, it either demotivates yeah. us or it motivates us Sorry. to do something yeah. quickly, right? I had a planning report. I was all excited. I, did. I, I know how Joe felt now when you have a report. <laughs> Bob the building, did a nice job. Good job. Uh, nice right. job. Here. So, um, so a, a raise of the hand is for the two appraisals. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. Um, let's move on. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Amy, for all that. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Uh, policy? Um, Grace Ann, that's you, right? Yeah. So we have one agenda item to discuss tonight. 12.1 Board of Education Administration will discuss the first reading of the revised policy 8550 meal charges, outstanding food service bill, per the attached. Uh, anybody have anything they want to discuss on this one? Grace Ann, is it does it read well to you or that looks looks, yeah, looks yeah. good? Yeah, this all came from Strauss. And what I yeah, did was I met with Jackie right. about the process of of how we handle delinquent charges and so forth. So that's all been put into the policy so that we're gonna follow it going forward. Okay. okay. Let, let, never been a policy problem it's been a procedural right. I, I agree I and this is only the first reading right correct okay mm -hmm. and nothing nothing in this would preclude us from giving somebody the whatever our basic lunch is whatever no. it's a cheese sandwich it's you know the extra yes yeah. okay right. mm -hmm. yep. all the car items that are additional yep okay 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 um i think alex th oh, thanks grace ann okay. um alex i think you're public relations right okay Yep. Um, Fran Burke, District Community Information Office Coordinator, will provide an update on the district activities. If we could pull up that um, spreadsheet, please. Marianne, if you could unmute, I believe she's on uh, the Zoom. If you could unmute, please. I'm here. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. I have some stats to share with everybody from the district Facebook page. Okay. Uh, so I'd like to start with um, the number of people that follow the page. If you see, when I started a, approximately a year ago, we had about 1500 people following the page and we just hit 2000. So we just went over um, and I'm very happy with that number. Um, and if you look to the right, there's some of the most engaging posts that we've had over the last couple of months. Um, and most of them you can see are accomplishments that the students and teachers have had. Some of them, you know, like the snow day, that's obviously something that people are very interested in very um, because it, it details what their children are going to be doing the next day. Um, and then if you go down to the insights, that's from Facebook business suite. That kind of helps me get some of the stats for the page. Um, we are up with um, our page reach, how many people are reached. And that's up about 80% in the last year. And I attribute that to um, a lot of the new people that are following the page. That's causing, you know, with some of the posts about what the students and teachers are doing, people to like and share the different posts. So more people are seeing the posts um, due to a few of those different things. Um, and then at the bottom, there's some of the recent news articles that um, have been in the news and some of the upcoming things that we're working on. Uh, one of the things that's not on there is I'm working with Mr. Cologne. He has some students that are writing a press release for DECA. So that'll also be out soon. Um, and then if anybody has any questions about the report, I'm happy to answer them. Okay. Anybody have any questions about the report? Um, how do we get um, not just social media updates? As I alluded to in my email, you know, community interaction isn't just you know Facebook and and Twitter. How do we get consistent um, quarterly updates to the board on our websites that are most frequented, and also our constant contact? Uh, open rates and all that kind of stuff. I don't think this is really necessary for Fran. It's more for yeah, I can, well, um, Tina and Dr. Yeah. Svankwitz. Yeah, we can get that through our tech department. Yeah. 
That's no problem. We can I can get that in the uh, you know the meeting in the near future. I can't hear you. <laughs> I can, I'm sorry. I can get that for a, a meeting, upcoming meeting. Okay. Do we use constant contact already? Uh, yeah, that's so one of the that's the, typically the emails that go out mm -hmm. would be constant contact. We also use PowerSchool for emails, but but the, typically when the letters go out and all that that I send, that's the con that's constant contact. PDFs. The PDF letters. Um, any any questions more about this about this report specifically or? Okay. Any other comment? Anything we want to also talk about? I have a about? question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, how do you find out about these events? Do you rely pretty much on the staff and coaches or uh, for your press releases? There's a number of different things. Uh, Dr. Stefankowitz and I talk regularly, so he's always letting me know, you know, some of the things that he wants me to attend or report on. Uh, the principals very often reach out to me. Um, some, of the, some of the teachers, some of the coaches, um, and the department heads as well. So really it's, it's a collaboration. That's why, you know, I'm kind of the coordinator of many different people trying to report and help, you know, get as many things out there about each of the schools, each of the clubs, um, you know, and definitely something to keep in mind is some of those posts have a lot of reach, but one of the things that, you know, all of us are definitely trying to work on is, you know, there's some groups that aren't going to get as much reach. So you're not going to see them on my report, maybe, but it's something that we're focusing on to make sure that we hit every group that's out there. Okay. Thank you. Um, Fran, uh, Ms. Burke, it's, it's Natalie. I just want to say congratulations. You've um, done a good job about getting the numbers up. It's impressive that we're over 2,000. Um, Looking to the future, I'm wondering if we have considered um, Instagram. I don't think the district has an Instagram page. If we do, I don't think it's active. I think um, we did, and but it, I don't. I don't. Well, I'm just wondering if active. we need to revisit that because mm -hmm. as more, you know, with expanding pre-K, kindergarten, we're going to be getting a lot more younger parents. Um, and from what my younger cousins tell me, is Facebook is for old people. <laughs> <laughs> So I do agree with you, Natalie. And I also think a lot of the high school students are on Instagram. So I think we would get a lot of people following some of their own things if, you know, we had that. So I, I do agree. And it would be easy to kind of work the two of them together. Mm -hmm. So that is something definitely to look for for the future. Okay. Good. Thank you. Good idea. Um, I'm just kind of curious. Uh, we, we were saying that we were going to post the meeting notes or the highlights. Jim. Yeah, that's been that's 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 been on me. Fran has done them, and that's just been me. Uh, just been um, you know, unfortunately, just focused on some other district business. So I'll I'll, I'll get back on that. Okay, great. It's my fault. Great. But Thanks. if she's doing them, so so she was writing them, but we're just not publishing them. Yeah, I'm saying it's mine because you because she sends them to me, and I review them and I edit them as necessary and. Uh, so I have not done that in the last couple of two months. months. <laughs> Haven't done it in two months. Yeah, I built the budget in the last two months. I know, but we so, did. We did say we were going to do it after every meeting. Yeah, and we were. We, we have we, been doing it. They have gone up. You know, it, yeah. it hasn't been two months. It definitely hasn't been two months. February 9th that was the one I showed as the last one. Yeah, like I said, I, I haven't done it in a little while. So we'll uh, we'll get back on it. I have a couple other questions. Um, thank you, um, Fran. It's it's so great to see all the the pictures. Um, I think has been like way more than even, even six months ago. I feel like there's more graphics, more pictures. So I, I love that the PR person and he loves seeing that. Are we going to um, be posting in Spanish, but Portuguese? Do we have any um, goals to do that? <laughs> Uh, we have not discussed that, but that's something that I will write down and Dr. Stefankowitz and I can talk about that. Um, you know, that, that's something that I, I feel like I would have to get some direction on, you know, I, mean, I, I can't really answer we, that myself. The things that we put out as a district, we, we, we translate into Spanish and much, much of that, but a lot of the, you know, event posts and things like that have, uh, have not gone that way yet, but, you know, certainly something we can discuss for the future. Yeah. Um, Natalie, did you want to, there was something you sent about a newsletter of some kind that you want to. It's more for Jim than Fran. I mean, if I okay. can bring it up now or I could bring it up in old business. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I thought. So, it, yeah. um, I had forwarded a, 
a letter from another school district that a friend of mine shared with me and it was um it's it's through constant contact i didn't realize we were using constant contact but um going to ask again about why the PDFs? Why can we not just send an email? Why do we have to go through this? Why can we send what? I'm sorry. Just send the email. Why do we have to go through this PDF? It just seems so antiquated to me. It's an extra step. It's an extra step for you. But that's the only way to get analytics. That's not to say we perform these analytics. So, I mean, no, we're using- You can get an open rate on constant contact. If somebody no, that's, what, yeah, that's why we- Oh, I thought you meant why are we no, using constant on contact? Email. No, no, no. Yeah, sorry, I misunderstood you what you meant. Email through constant contact. You can get the open rate just if someone's read the. You can see if they scrolled or if mm -hmm. they've just read the headline. I don't know. It just seems like just an like extra click to me to be using the PDFs. I don't know. And I just thought that the format was really nice. There were I don't know if it, it came through from forwarding in a couple mm -hmm. times, but there's pictures on the bottom of the email. It's like not, we we used to do it used to actually be the board of education newsletter i'm pretty sure we used constant contact to 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 do it it used to come out quarterly um remember right when we used to do that Jim I mean, did it, yeah. um no, the pr committee person did it probably uh, no he went, I mean, we probably have stopped around i mean I don't, I don't remember when it stopped probably around the time of the pandemic hitting and then actually if, if you recall we were putting out a uh, kelly's office was putting out uh sort of a weekly newsletter or I think it was weekly or bi-weekly during pandemic during that 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 three month of pandemic and you know just kind of got away from it. But uh, you know certainly investigate that again. I just think I just think we gotta jazz it up a little. That's all. Just you know. Um, and I also want to say going back to September to the communication about the buses, um, that's been really greatly improved um, throughout the course of the year. So I appreciate that. Thank uh, you. I know the principals have worked hard to, yeah, to they have. get it out there. We get the an email and remind, it's really, it's like been very helpful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, just, out of, just out of curiosity for Fran, is there any, is there any new initiatives that you have in, in scope that, that, that you're thinking about? Um, we were looking at newsletters. Um, we tried a couple of different formats for the press releases. So that's something that, um, you know, Dr. Stefankowitz and I have been talking about um so that's definitely one of the things i'm maybe most excited about okay is that is that something for this by this year or is it something this do over the summer and uh, to start? i mean it depends there's some free versions and there's you know that are not as good i think as the ones that you pay for but i i know the way the budget has been i've been that's listening part of, to the last part of what we were waiting of, on a bunch of meetings <laughs> Okay. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, in we're in looking at a couple things and we want to see how the budget will play out. Okay. Yeah. So you think it might be more like a welcome back to school kind of thing? That's one kind of thing. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, and now I just lost my train of thought. Um, oh, Bitly's. Um, I, I feel like I bring this up quarterly. Um, Bitly's are tiny URLs. Not only do we not have links in our PDFs that we send out, but we we don't shorten the URL so that we can track where they're coming from. So it's invaluable um, knowledge to find out if people who find out about or open up anything about the strategic session, for example, got it from Dr. Stefangris's Twitter, because we're going to assign a special code to his, versus Fran's post on Facebook, versus what's posted on their website. And um, I think we're missing an opportunity to kind of glom audience participation and some real data. So I hope that we use that soon. Fran, just, Fran, just out of curiosity, um, um, I, do you feel like um, you, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't know much about your background, but do you feel like you have an appreciation for the, for the different things that you can have at your disposal? Or do you feel like you need to you need to um, sit with somebody to talk through that or, or attend some kind of session to learn more about? Um, I definitely think we have IT people in the district that could help me with specific right. things. So if there was something that you know we decided was important, like if we needed the statistics that you're talking about for something specific, and Dr. Stabankwitz thought that you know we needed to do it, then you know I definitely think I'm capable of working with someone to put that into action. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Okay, cool. Um, is that, yeah, it's not, it's not, I wasn't trying to like assign work for Fran. That's more of like a district thing though too. Whoever puts our stuff on the, on the website should be including a tiny URL or bit.ly. When Dr. Stefankwitz posts something, he should be using his own. It's not something that Fran needs to sit there yeah, yeah. and create 10 bit.ly's for every. I know Mr. Hall has had, uh, and, and I'd have to I'd have to revisit it with him, but I, I know that in the past he's had concerns about about the URLs that, that you're speaking about, and I'm I'm not uh, not sure if it's a security issue or something related to to why that's been brought up as concern, and I'll follow up with him. But but I know there's been issue in the past about using um, you know the tiny URLs, but I will follow up with him more about that. Okay, cool. Okay, um, anything else for Fran at this point? Fran, thanks for thanks for all you're doing. Really appreciate it. Good work. Thank you. Thank and, you for having and, me. Thank you. And thanks for staying thank up you. tonight. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's not, I, mean, I don't know. That was like nine thirty. Yeah. We don't have to stay. Um. <laughs> okay. So now we uh, go to old business. Anybody for old business? Uh, Miss Gilman. So uh, Shore Regional is having their open house uh, next week to for the parents of 20, oh God, I think I wrote by, it said 2026, 2027, almost drove off the road. <laughs> but I'm wondering, when's our showcase? What are we doing to draw parents to our district? Are we, we having it? Our, we had it in October. But we don't do anything in the spring to no. encourage parents to, Enroll no, in our Spartan schools. Typically, well, we do a whole thing about Spartan schools, right? Back but, in October. No, though. well, no. Then we go back to the middle schools in January, and when the kids are okay. signing up, and we do all that. Absolutely. But in terms of open house for the parents, that's that's. We used to do it in January. We moved it up because we found that parents were making decisions about what high school they were attending mm -hmm. before January. Right. So doing something in the spring, overwhelmingly, most parents. Um, have made that decision already so we moved it up to the fall to be more out in front right. because that's when we that's when the vocational schools were having their open houses and so we and wanted to move RBC up so that we were you know rbcs and cba so we wanted to be in that so that we were as a matter of fact that was the feedback that we got was we need to move our times mm -hmm. up into the fall because to catch yeah because people were often going to other open houses and making up their minds before we were even offering Okay. So that's why we do it, and we do it in the. Uh, I think we'll say it's late October, early November, maybe you know, that time frame. Okay. I'm sure Great. that's something Fran can advertise to. Mm -hmm. Um, Alex. Um, I literally forgot a folder in my car, so I think everyone's getting less questions from me because I had a whole bunch of other questions in my car. Um, but to bring up something that um, Irene was saying, for example, Spring Lake Heights School District has on April 25th, learn about our academic programs, tour our campus, interested students should come with their parents and guardians. Um, I don't really know about the date, like you're saying, and I, I believe you if you're saying that fall is good, but maybe we could visit some of these other districts and see what they're doing and seeing how they showcase, um, because that's ex it was in the coaster, they had an actual color photo, um, color advertisement for Spring Lake School to try to bring people to their district. And it said tuition, we'll give you information on tuition rates and all that kind of stuff for their public district. So there's that. And then um, old business 8.12, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask the safety grant program, if you could give us any more information on that. These are rebates that we get every year from our insurance brokers. Last year it was $40,000 and we used it to upgrade all cameras around the, the facilities, as well as some of the outside cameras on the buses. Mm -hmm. We got over 40,000 last year, it's dropped to 20,000. So typically that'll buy, you know, six cameras. And we already earmarked it for cameras or? What, I, what I'd say is it's for either facilities, security upgrades. Mm -hmm. I don't specifically say one thing or another. I say it's for maintenance or maintenance and uh, the facility upgrades and for anything on transportation. The other thing that we've done is typically we would have another security meeting before the end of the school year, district wide security meeting to discuss the brand and discuss any possible uses for it too. 
So we said, well, we're, we're scheduled to, you know, we're, we're slated. I don't have it scheduled yet, but we're slated to have another security meeting before the end of the school year, probably uh, late April, early May. So we're slated to have another security committee meeting before the end of the year to which we you guys will discuss what to do with this so, extra 20 grand. Okay, in light of that, I was at Marlboro High School this week for work and they have, they use something called the scholar chip. It's similar to the, um, what's that other um, thing that I keep saying, I wish we had at our schools where they take a picture of everyone who comes into the building. Um, so I, it's just another company that I hope we look into getting at our schools. They took my license, they made sure I wasn't a felon, that I wasn't anybody who didn't have custody of my children. And they printed out my name that said, I'm a visitor and it had my photo from my driver's license. That would be great to use our $20,000 for 8.12 on. Yeah, it's very similar to what they use like at Jersey Shore. Mm -hmm. So. Would that's, that bring up if someone was like on a sex offender list? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, yep. And it like calls the police if there's a warrant. Do you know what you went on just walking in the cost? Um, the other one that I really want everyone that I've not everyone what's that other company that I've been like saying can we please just get this now it begins with an R remember do it I do <sighs> no, no we just got an email like this week from them <laughs> they're like only 20 grand for a district-wide system so wouldn't that be great if we could get 20 grand and just use it for Mike got three quotes and it was nowhere that low it was, so I would like to see also on, what you on, 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 ongoing costs. You buy hardware and then right. it needs constant yeah, but, but you have to purchase it every year. It's, it's, 20, grand. it's 20 grand the first year or so, and then it's like three grand every year. I mean, I think if your average, that's out of six schools, it's no more than five grand a year after the first year. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. Okay. Well, let have them submit me a proposal because that's we, we did not get that. Okay. Mike went out to three different companies. Okay. Check them all. The lowest we saw in year one was like $32,000. The okay. lowest. All right. Thank you. No, I'll, I'll look into it. I, I had it in my old district. I, I thought it was a great idea. And we, we even made vendors who were, you know, coming into the facilities. They had to go through that same mm -hmm. process. They went through a security catch and, you know, their badges were given. So... I mean, it's, it, we are looking into it. When he did the three, did he use the one that you knew? Maybe they weren't good. I don't know. You're, the I let district. him reach out to everybody. I told him the vendor that we utilized. He came back. He, he made the assessment. Um, and we did discuss it during budget time. It just, it was not. Raptor. Raptor, Raptor was not. Raptor was one yes. of them. Absolutely. Okay. But, and I don't see why we can't use ESSER funds for that, but it's a whole other argument, I guess. <laughs> Well, you can, I mean, you found that you can't use it. I spoke directly to the county superintendent multiple times about it. I spoke to Raptor and they, they told Raptor me that. A vendor I know, of course, but them. they said, they say you can use ESSER. The county superintendent who approves our budget for grants said we cannot. I could call him right now if you want. <laughs> no, we don't, want, we don't want to do that. Okay. Um, okay, Fine. that was uh, old business. And now, is there any new business? Sorry, Mayor. I just wanted to. Oh, I didn't. I thought you were like just trying to fly. No, or something. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were no I just wanted to um, let the board know to remind the board that that Greece starts on Thursday, and I think it's um, awesome when we can show up there. I'm going to try and go Thursday it's night. The calendars. Go on yeah, Friday. it's in the calendar, yeah. but Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I just wanted to point it out. It's Sunday. And Sunday, oh, right? I miss Sunday. Yeah. They don't usually do Sunday. Right. Yeah, they sure do. There's a Sunday, two o'clock. Yep. Always right. doing that in there. Grease lightning. Nice. Yep. Thursday. If there's, if there's five or more people in the room, does it? Um... No, not for that. That kind of stuff, no. Not for that purpose. <laughs> okay. If you jump on stage and start talking about school business, then we can. <laughs> okay. Um, One more. Yes. Um, so we got the email about the uh, conference, uh, the board conference back uh, or this coming October 24th. <clears throat> through the 26th and it's in person in Atlantic City and uh, sorry that didn't make it to budget <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> but can and we I use SF like funds? I know several of I us may, would like to go. And um, I didn't see anything on it, but typically <laughs> they'll send it to me and say the group rate is this, and then I'll right. check it's to good. see who wants to go. Okay, good. It's Absolutely. said housing and registration open. Yep. That was, that was usually September, I want to say, is when, when it, we usually vote on ourselves. Yes, yep. Yeah. September? Yeah. Why September. Why I, would do, I would do it earlier. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You it's know, open now. Especially if, it, if it's a discounted room rate. And, yeah. you know, Look at Dano. So there's an interest. Uh, how many people would we like to go to that? You get it? You get it? Yeah. I you think, don't get uh, Book at Dano? I think most of the people. All right. So then I'll, yeah. Did you yeah, get then I'll look into it. I'll absolutely yeah. Did you get do Book at Dano. Do I? Y5O? That's why. Yeah. I they don't know what book yeah, Dan I've never seen one. And what? No, but this is old school. Ones. I was like, I, I do they do like, it in the middle of the night? No, you must have thought I was crazy. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Dan Hopkins? Chuck Lorde. Chuck Lorde. That's right, Dan. I liked it. What, what else are you <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to wipe out on that. Anybody else have anything for uh, new business? Oh my gosh, Irene, that was great. <laughs> okay, uh, no new business. So we're going to go to public comment. Um, would anybody from the public like to make a comment at this time? Ms. Conway, there's nobody in this room. So anybody remotely like to make a comment? And no, there are no remote commenters either. Okay, everybody. Um, so everybody was online. Thanks for coming. And I guess we're going to have a uh, a motion to adjourn? Motion. motion. Second. Okay. Have a good night, everyone. I didn't even see.